Can you get wealthy in this life without working for your money? No, you can't, obviously. Can you get educated and go into a stream that you want to become without going through lots of struggle and being tested and sacrificing some of your social life? We all work here. Most of us work here. And I know that the Sydney people mostly are involved in a lot of trade. A lot of them obviously go to university as well. But each and every one of us probably here is a working person. And you know how much you, so you sacrifice from your social life, right? What, eight hours a day maybe? Minimum? Nine hours? Thirteen hours of your day? You sacrifice. And we are willing to repeat that every day. Every morning. We will wake up at 6 a.m. And I hate to say if some of us forget about Fajr prayer and rather would wake up at 6. I hate to say that some of us if the alarm didn't go off for Fajr or no one woke us up, it's no big deal. But if the alarm was missed for when we wake up for our work or no one woke us up, we go nuts. <laughs> what is more important here? Well, because you see, that's a proof that a person like that maybe loves the luxury a little bit more. And when the test or calamity befalls them, I guarantee you that that type of a person, or most likely, will not be able to pass this test. They'll be the first to whine. They'll be the first to complain. They'll be the first to lose their temper. And I have seen in my life many people, when a tiny affliction befalls them, they are quick to complain about Allah, not to Allah. There's a difference between complaining to Allah and complaining about Allah. Why me, man? What have I done? I've been good. I've been praying. You know, when I teach, where I teach, there was this young boy who wanted to become a basketball player. And as he grew up, training in basketball, became a teenager, one day he crossed the road and the car hit him. And he broke his leg, or I think he fell off the tree and he broke his leg. He broke his ligament, which made him disabled for life. What I mean by disabled, meaning he cannot go into extreme sports. He said, I used to pray five times a day. I have memorized two juz of the Qur'an. I read the Qur'an every day. Why did Allah do this to me? He knows that I hope to become a sports player one day. He knows my, 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 my hope and my, all my life. And He took that away from me. I'm not going to pray to Him anymore. And He stayed for three whole years, not praying a single raka to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But alhamdulillah, one day He discovered as he, he discovered a talent other than basketball. He had an ability to make public speeches. And one day he stood up in class and I asked him to say something to the students about a certain knowledge of Islam. And he spoke about it because he had to. And he received some good feedback from the people. After that, he realized that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him a different talent being able to give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something happened to the boy. And he still played basketball, but on a low level. And he said to me, Allah, he said, you know, I've never discovered that I have a talent inside of me. Now it worked for him. And I realize now that maybe, I don't, maybe basketball wasn't really my path. Maybe if I tried that way, I probably wouldn't have been able to get there and I'll probably miss out on all the other talents that I have. The talent of entering Jannah and being able to benefit people. Something happened to him. Alhamdulillah, he started praying again. The point of that is, there are many people like him who are straight away quick to complain against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are a few who realize that they have other talents that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them. You never know.